Was not planning on doing this type of video today. I actually have a tier list video planned. I have an Xavier Harrow video planned. Uh, I have a Will of Fins win the a AFC East reaction video planned. I got a lot planned. But this popped up and I got to talk about it. What is up, Finn fans? How are you guys doing on this beautiful Friday? I don't know. I don't know. It's still smoky around here. Hope you guys are safe to the people in Canada. Still still got some wildfires going on up there. But uh, like I said, I had a different video planned for today. And I have a list, a plethora of video now that mini camps are over and we have a break until the end of July. But I, Omar Kelly wrote this article and surprised the crap out of me the fact that Tyreek Hill didn't have a full grasp on the playbook and still was a top five wide receiver in the NFL so we're gonna we're gonna look at this article and see exactly what happened and and all that good stuff and react to it um because this is pretty this is pretty crazy pretty crazy so the title of the article is Tyreek Hill says Dolphins go as far as Tua takes the team which isn't wrong again a lot of people downplay Tua's importance of this Miami Dolphin team and I, as I mean a lot of people I'm not talking about the media because everywhere you look you hear the media say if Tua is healthy if Tua is healthy and they're not wrong Talking other people downplay the importance of him at the quarterback position. He says Tyreek Hill statistically is on pace to become a Hall of Famer if the speedy receiver stays consistent with his current level of production for the next four or five years. Been pumping out thousand yard seasons left and right. But the seven time Pro Bowler isn't shy about sharing his opinion that the 2023 Miami Dolphins will only go as far as Tua Tungabeloa takes him. And Hill is confident Miami is a Super Bowl contender because of the growth he has seen from his fourth year quarterback. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard this, right? Um, there was the article that I read to you guys that Tua is taking a huge step forward. I think it was Albert Breer wrote it where essentially he was shutting down stopping plays and taking more control of the offense and trying to get people more into their situation and really having a command of the offense. Again, we saw the difference last year. We saw the difference when he was out there and when Teddy and Skyler were out there. He has a command of this offense. They didn't. He was helping these receivers learn their routes. They necessarily weren't. He has a good command. Two has a better mastery of McDaniel's offense and is working to uh, form a better com chemistry with his receivers, which includes the two additions of Robbie Chosen and Braxton Berrios. But most important, but more importantly, he's taken ownership of the offense and the team Hill uh, and the team Hill points out. This is what Tyreek Hill says. Tua has stepped up a lot in his leadership role. I know last year was my first year playing with him, but seeing him this year, he's more vocal with the offense, leading and group chats and stuff like that, Hill said, who had a career high, 119 receptions, 1,710 receiving yards, eight touchdowns last season. <clears throat> so again, Tua's taking that leadership role. Tua knows how important this is. It's, you know, He's got next year. And that fifth-year option, Dolphins can still, you know, it's fully guaranteed, but that doesn't mean he's fully guaranteed to be on the team. He's organizing workouts outside of the Miami Dolphins stadium. When I first got here, I said, bro, you should be comfortable with telling a group of wideouts to just meet you wherever. We're going to pull up regardless, so he's been doing a great job. According to Hill, if Tua was finished, uh, if Tua, who finished 2022, uh, as an NFL's top pass rater, wanted those workouts to be in the home state of Hawaii. He would, his playmakers would hop on a Spirit Airline to make it happen. Now, I hope he means that he'll hop on a Spirit Airline, meaning by any means necessary they'll get there, because Spirit Airline sucks. <laughs> I've flown Spirit Airline. Horrible. That way I can sneak a vacation in with my family, also get some work in said Hill, who said Thursday his goal is to become the NFL's uh, first receiver to have uh, a 2,000-yard receiving season. Hill, all -time, uh, Hill a four-time All-Pro selection who needs an average of 117.6 yards per game for 17 games next season to become a 2,000-yard receiver. I say this about that, about him wanting to be the first-ever receiver, 2,000-yard receiver. 
I love it, right? I love the aspiration. I love the goal, but I don't want it to happen because that means that it's just, it's hill, 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 hill. And you forget about the run game. You forget about Waddle. You forget about anyone else that's on this offense. Spread it around. But also, if the, the Dolphins are the next, you know, greatest show on turf and we are putting out crazy numbers and, and our offense is ridiculous, then it's possible. But again, expectations. Uh, last year, he averaged 100.6, but it should be pointed out that he didn't play with Tua Tungavailoa. The Dolphins stored a quarterback for five games last season. And again, go look it up. I made a video about it. Him and Waddle's production dropped when Tua wasn't on the field. So again, that if healthy with Tua doesn't just affect the wins, losses, or the team, it also affects the production of the receivers around him. So again, there's that stigma that, oh, you know, Tua only did well because of the receivers around him. Tua only did well because of the offense put around him. Duh. But also the other way around. There were a mo uh, there was a moment last season when Hill was on pace to achieve that 2,000-yard milestone, but he battled a few injuries late in the season, which is when Miami's offense struggled, especially in games where Tua was sidelined by his second concussion. I feel like I've got the right tools around me, Hill said, referring to the you know the offense. I got, uh, I got obviously, the most accurate quarterback in the NFL. I've got one of the best head coaches in the NFL. And also my position coach, Wes Walker, is also a monster. Yes, I agree. So just having those three things and me just keeping the same mindset each and every day that I want to get better, I want to break the record, and I do want to break uh, that I – better and I want to break the record and I do want to break the record so again I love the aspiration I love the goal but I would love it I'd love it to happen if everyone's productive like that I wouldn't love it to happen if it's just to a to a hill 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 we got to get hill the ball we got to get hill the ball according to hill he was just winging it out there just using all athleticism in mcdaniel's offense last season and didn't have a firm grasp of the playbook like he does now you don't see people getting bent out of shape about him saying that and this is in his rookie year during a pandemic with no off season this year, everything has slowed down, Hill, said Hill, who sat uh, out team drills during minicamp this week because he's nursing a minor injury. I do want to break the record, Hill said, pointing out uh, the addition of the 17th game, uh, providing his chance to ellipse the 20,000-yard threshold. I feel like this is one of those years that I can achieve it. And again, the Dolphins are home for nine games. So I just, I, you know, I came across this article and I just found it very, very fascinating that he didn't have a full grasp on that offense. And you could tell he didn't have a full grasp on that offense because you saw Tua doing his thing. You saw Tua, you know, telling the guys where to go. There's a few times where he would talk to Tyreek Hill, tell him where, what he's looking for, what all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, when Tua wasn't on the field for those five games, Tyreek Hill, I think, had one good game against the Vikings. And then, other than that, it, no touchdowns for him and Waddle, like, and just a huge, like, a big drop in production because he didn't have a full grasp of it. And it seemed like Tua did. So Tua was able to help him more. And now, going into the second year, Tua has even more of a grasp. And like I've said in a previous video, he has full command of that offense and keeping people on, you know, in line which I think is incredibly fascinating. But I want to know what you guys think. Comment below. What's your takes on this article? What's your take on um, everything going on with, uh, you know, Tua, with his leadership, Tyreek Hill, what he had to say? Comment below, and I'm going to get to one of you guys' comments of the day. For comment of the day, um, one, let me, one comment, which came from El... LT Asale. Hope I said your name right. He said, Come of the day, can players get together to work out when they are on a break before training camp? Yes. Like I, I talked about um, in the article, 
and we've seen it a ton of times. We've seen it this offseason before Ortiz and stuff. Tua gets together with his receivers, and sometimes the offensive line gets together or all that stuff, and they do work out together. So it's just not with the coaches. They get a little bit of a break from the stadium and from the um, facility. The other thing I want to talk about real quick, um, obviously yesterday was the news that um, Dalvin Cook is going to be released. And there's a lot of questions, and I notice it on Twitter, I notice it on Facebook, and I notice it in the comment section. A lot of people are saying, oh, the Dolphins can't afford him, or what are we going to do with the other running backs and all that stuff. First and foremost, Dolphins can definitely afford Dalvin Cook. If Dalvin Cook wanted $15 million a year, the Dolphins can't afford it. Everyone sees that the Dolphins have roughly 12 to $13 million in cap space, and they think, oh, that's it, that's all they have. The way contracts are structured and signing bonuses and, you know, incentive based and guaranteed money and all that stuff, you look at it and you think, oh, he wants, some people think he's going to get like 12 million a year. I don't see that. It's a difference between going after, you know, an unproven, you know, running back or a running back who still has years left. He's going to be 28. So he's not going to get a 10, 12 million dollar contract. That being said. You see, you look at these contracts and people are like, well, what about Christian Wilkins and Connor Williams? They need to get signed. Yes. And them getting signed will give the Dolphins more cap space. Look at with Ed Oliver and the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills had $1.5 million in cap space. They re-signed Ed Oliver. All of a sudden, they had enough money to go out and get Leonard and pay him $9 million. The cap is very manipulative. So you can do whatever you want. That's why I, I, me and a lot of people say it's not real Obviously, it's a real thing that you have to, you know, stay under. You can manipulate it. You could do whatever you need to do to get whoever you want to get. So, again, if the Dolphins want Dalvin Cook, they're going to get Dalvin Cook. But, again, I don't see them spending more than $5 million for him with incentive-based signing bonuses, too. Like, if he wants $11, 12000000 million, he ain't getting it from Miami. So he'll, he might go to Denver to get overpaid, or he might go to Dallas to get overpaid. But if he wants that $11, $12 million, it's not going to be Miami. But I hope that clears that up because I noticed, you know, I read a lot in the comic section on Facebook and, and, you know, Dolphin chat rooms and stuff that people are confused by the fact that they think we can't afford. We can afford it. We can afford getting Dalvin Cook and DeAndre Hopkins if we wanted to and still be able to re-sign um, Christian Wilkins and um, Connor Williams because re-signing Christian Williams and Connor Williams gives the Dolphins more cap space. They add the, they take this year, make it to a signing bonus, have them sign the new contract, and all of a sudden back end some of the move money around. That's all they do. So Dolphins can do whatever they want. It's about how much and is he willing to come here, and are the Dolphins willing to give him and come to a middle ground? That's what it's. That's all that it comes down to. Dalvin Cook is that Miami? Hey, how much you want to come play for us? This is how much I want. That's a lot of money. Where can we meet in the middle? I don't think we can. All right, Dalvin, good luck wherever you go. Plain and simple. Or, hey, Dalvin, how much is it going to take for you to get here? It's going to take about that much. That's a lot of money. Uh, where where can we meet in the middle? This is where we can meet in the middle. I really want to play for my hometown. Okay, I like that. Let's sign the contract. Welcome to Miami. One of two ways are going to happen, and that's how it's going to shake out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'll see you guys Monday again, unless news breaks news breaks you're getting a video but i'll see you guys monday with a ton of different content i'm going to start the miami dolphin camp battle uh camp training camp position battle i think monday i'll start we start with i do them all quarterbacks running backs wide receivers tight ends offensive linemen defensive linemen linebackers corner safeties special teams i guess um so i do them all so we got about what 11 12 positions i kind of spread them out and uh, give you guys content and keep you guys entertained until training camp starts at the end of July. Like usual, stay classy. Offense up.